Hi there. This will be another grammar lesson, right? In this class, I will show you the difference between pretérito indefinido or pasado simple and pretérito imperfecto. Okay? The title then is Diferencia entre pretérito indefinido y pretérito imperfecto. So, what are these two pretéritos? These are two different conjugations or different tenses. Pretérito indefinido, pretérito imperfecto. Both are in the past. Actually, the word pretérito means uh, past, yes? The reason why I want to dedicate a, a lesson for these two is because Spanish has some, some more conjugation tenses than English. So, there are not, I, or I think there are no not enough uh, words for or names for this, uh, these tenses to, uh, to uh, translate them in English, okay? Because, for example, pretérito indefinido and pretérito imperfecto in English, they are both the simple past, okay? However, depending on the context or the, or the meaning uh, we want to, to give to that sentence in simple past, right? In Spanish, we either use this tense or this tense, okay? You'll see what I mean. Yo, look, hablé, here we are conjugating hablé and hablaba. Both of these, in English, would be simple past, okay? Actually, this would be I spoke and this would be I spoke, right? But here, then, I want to give you uh, the meaning for you to see which is the difference between using pretérito indefinido and pretérito imperfecto. So, yo hablé inglés. Yo hablé inglés. This means I spoke English. This is pretérito indefinido or pasado simple, right? Hablé. Now, let's try this. Yo hablaba Inglés. Yo hablaba inglés, right? This uh, different uh, conjugation of the past would be the same as saying I used to speak English, right? So, yo hablaba inglés would be as saying I used to speak English. So, Pretérito imperfecto, we use it when we want to express something that we did in the past but that we probably now do not do anymore, okay? For example, I used to eat in that restaurant. In Spanish, we would use pretérito imperfecto. We would say, yo comía en ese restaurant, okay? And if we want to say, I ate in that restaurant, we would use pretérito indefinido. Yo comí en ese restaurant, okay? Now, here, that example I gave you, we can find it here. Yo comí mucho en ese restaurant. Yo comí mucho en ese restaurant. Here, the word mucho can, can have different meanings, right? Depending on the context. Mucho can, be, can mean a lot, right? I ate a lot in that restaurant. Or it can mean, I ate very often in that restaurant, or I ate many times in that restaurant, okay? So, mucho can also be a synonym of muchas veces, many times, right? So, yo comí mucho en ese restaurant. Comí es pretérito indefinido. I ate many times in that restaurant. Now, let's change comí into pretérito imperfecto and it will be comía. See how the meaning changes. Yo comía mucho en ese restaurant. This would be a saying. I used to eat often in that restaurant, right? Or I used to eat a lot in that restaurant, right? Depending on what meaning you want to give to the word mucho, right? So you can see how the word comía, sorry, the verbs in pretérito imperfecto, they um, they have the meaning of something that we did in the past, but we used to do and probably now we do not do anymore, right? And also it has this 
other meaning here, right? There is a slight difference. You'll see. There is a, a compound tense in Spanish using the verb estar, right? We haven't seen that yet. Estar, and then we add whatever verb in infinitive we want, right? Estar lloviendo, for example, will be to be raining, right? If we want to say, está lloviendo, it is raining. Estar corriendo means to be running. Yo estoy corriendo, right? That's why present continuous uses this verb, to be something, right? To be running, right? So, this, the, this auxiliary verb, estar, we can conjugate it in different tenses and then we will have a different tense, okay? So, here we are using, this is the verb, the verb is estar hablando, okay, to be speaking, again here, to be speaking. Since the verb to be is the auxiliary verb, what we conjugate is the auxiliary verb, the verb to be, right? I was speaking, I will be speaking, I have been speaking, right? In Spanish it's the same, estar is a, the auxiliary verb. So, what changes, what we conjugate, is the auxiliary verb, right? So here, the verb estar, the auxiliary verb, is conjugated in pretérito indefinido, and here the verb estar is conjugated in pretérito imperfecto, right? And see how the meaning of the sentence changes. Yo estuve hablando con ella. Yo estuve hablando con ella. I have been talking with her, right? I have been talking with her. Sentence in the past. Now, if we pass the auxiliary verb in pretérito imperfecto, look, yo estaba hablando con ella, and then we have to, con to add a predicate, right? Cuando something, when something happened. Yo estaba hablando con ella cuando sonó el teléfono. This means, I was talking with her when the phone rang, okay? So see how the meaning changes between estuve and estaba. The meaning would be, I have been talking and I was talking when, da, 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 okay? So, here, we also use the auxiliary verb in pretérito imperfecto, when we were doing something in the past until or when something happened, and then we have the predicate with when, okay? So, if you have seen my lessons, the PowerPoint video lessons, that's lessons from 130, up to 151, I think. No, in 41. No. Or 51. Yeah. In those lessons, I have conjugated all 22 different tenses in Spanish, right? For I showed you the rules for conjugating regular verbs, okay? And there I showed you, uh, there was a PowerPoint, a lesson for the pretérito indefinido, or pasado simple, as it's also called, and pretérito imperfecto, right? There I, I also put some examples, right? But here I want you to understand uh, how a sentence changes, how the meaning changes of a sentence, okay? And as, as well as these two would conjugate in English as simple past, right? The, there are other tenses where the auxiliary verb is conjugated either in pretérito indefinido or pre pretérito imperfecto, right? And they, therefore we have two different conjugations that in English they would translate into one, right? For example, if, uh, if the verb haber, right, same as in English we use the verb to be, as a auxiliary verb, I was eating, no sorry, the verb to have, I have eaten, right? Okay, 